Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse DePlantis here. I hope you're enjoying our YouTube videos. That's why you don't want to miss anything. So like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you will know when new content has been posted. That's like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So right now, watch this and be blessed. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis. And thank you for tuning into our boardroom chat today. And I, I, I want to talk about something I think is very unique. Okay. Do you know what it is? No. You have no idea. And I never know. And Usually never, I don't know. And neither do I until <laughs> about maybe 10 minutes before we go on camera. But the Holy Spirit knows. You know, people, for a long, long time, we've been preaching 47 years, have always asked me, why do you preach faith so much? Why is faith so important to you? Because there's so many other subjects in the Bible, so many wonderful things. Right. Well, number one, Hebrews 11, verse 6 said, It's impossible to please God unless you use faith. Right. Because he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. But there's another scripture that I really enjoy, and that's the reason why. Because without faith, nothing can happen. You can't get saved without faith. That's true. It's just it, nothing happens without it. Mm. I call faith the thread of the fabric of God's clothes. It's a garment. It is. You see what I'm saying? So if you got a Bible or an iPad or a you know, telephone, whatever you use for Scripture, go with me to the book of Romans chapter 1. Now, the reason why I'm going to Romans, Romans of that day was the city of cities. Oh. It was the, I don't know, epoch. Is that the right word I want to use? The, uh, of the Roman Empire. Right. I mean, if you got the Rome. The government seat. It was a government seat. The, it the was power everything. of the world of that day. Of that day. You know, the Roman Rome. Empire. Right. Today, New York is the city of finance. It's known as the financial center, center of the world. I right. don't know how much longer it's going to hold that title. Mm. Washington, D.C. is also known as the government, uh, the seat of, of America, known very, very strong all over the yeah, world. Yeah, but I think New York is more well known. That's where, right now, the United Nations is it's still a lot there. of things talk happening about in New York. Moving it, but that's what's but D.C. is, uh, you know, naturally is the government seat sure. of the world, where uh, New York is the financial uh, city of the world as of this time anyway. Right. But Paul was writing to the church in Rome and he needed to get to Rome. I think Paul was saying, if I can speak the gospel or preach this gospel in Rome and get a revival going on in Rome, then mm. I can touch the world. Mm. And that's what he wanted to do. And uh, we've known about Paul from the day he first stepped out. We slapped off the donkey, something this man called Saul of Tarsus. Tarsus was very unique wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. In, in my opinion, the greatest intellectual mind ever drawn to the rim of Christianity. But he was a man that, buddy, once he made his mind up about something, now you had to prove it to him. Once he got it, he wouldn't change. Mm -hmm. And I want to go to Romans chapter 1. I want to read verse 8. He's talking to the Christians at Rome. He says this, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. Now watch this. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Right. You know, I really believe, Kathy, in all the places I've been in, my faith is spoken out about all the time there. Mm -hmm. If you're going to touch the world, people need to know you're a faith person. Mm -hmm. People need to know the ability of your faith, the working of your faith, and how it functions and operates in life. Think about that, that your faith was spoken of throughout the old world. That, that's a great repetition, repetition, repetition to have. Repetition, right. It would be a good repetition too, you know, <laughs> a repetition to have that that man or that woman is a person of faith. Right. Now, you know, a lot of people talk about grace, and I love grace because, you know, you can't get saved without grace. But without faith, you can't even accept grace. Right. It's See, so it, it's just impossible to do anything without faith. Now, I'm going to ask you the question. Is your faith spoken about in the church that you go to? Is your faith spoken about in the community you live in? Hmm. Is your faith spoken about in the country that you live in? Are you known as a faith person that's so powerful that the first thing they see is the faith you have in God? Yeah, that's true. What that's do you a think great about that? question. That's a great question to ask yourself. But, you know, it makes me think about, well, what is faith? Because there's a lot of people that are watching that may be new in the gospel. Maybe right. they don't understand the term faith. But, but I believe one of the best definitions of faith that I've heard is, of course, there's the Hebrew, Hebrews 11, chapter 1, 
definition that the Bible gives, but uh, the way I explain it or think about it is faith is acting on what you believe. Amen. So a lot of people can talk about what they believe, but are you acting it out? Are you seeing the results of what you b say you believe? So this faith should have, uh, in, in fact, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is really re uh, believing and receiving the promises of God. So this, these people in Rome, he says their faith is spoken of throughout the world. So I wonder what they were, demonstrations they were seeing. You know, I was thinking about that. In fact, I preached on this in the church. I've started a message series on Sundays about the book of Romans, and we're going to study through it. And it was all started when you preached a message on, on a Sunday. I think it was about the impartation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, something, I forget the title right. of it, but it was a powerful message. Impartation, and, a gift in waiting. Yeah, that's true. It's so good. And they could watch that on the app. It's a really good one to go back and study and listen to. But I was just thinking about how, you know, Paul uh, had a lot of interactions with these people from Rome, but he had never been to Rome when he wrote this, this, this right. epistle. But he was telling them he wanted to go to them because he wanted to impart something like you mm -hmm. were teaching about. But one of the reasons, one of the people he connected with in Rome, you know, I, from Rome was this, this couple that you know, called, we all know from the Bible called Priscilla and Aquila. That's they right. were a powerful faith couple. Amen. And they were a big part of that church in, in Corinth. Corinth, where Jesus, I mean, excuse me, where Paul wrote that book of Corinthians that Amen. we all know so well. So they must have had a powerful reputation and talking about what was going on in that church. But it really wasn't a church. It was a group of believers they, that he spoke church to. Church in that house is what it Because was. they, you know, they couldn't meet. That was such a, the city that you couldn't meet. You had to be secretive more about meeting because mm -hmm. that's not long. Paul was actually killed in Rome. Right. Because of that. But uh, these people had a reputation of being fa a faith couple. Amen. I think we got that reputation, oh, yeah. Jesse, being a I, faith couple. I tell couple. you another couple, you cannot think, you can't separate the word faith out of them. That's Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. That's true. They, they were a big integral part oh, of our, our early uh, ministry, our are. early formative years of, of being a believer, actually. Amen. Things we heard them preach on TV, and they're still dear friends, of course, and we still learn from them messages they've preached in the past and messages they're continuing to preach Amen. through Amen. the different platforms and outreaches that they have. Well, you know, that your faith would be spoken of throughout the whole world. That is an amazing statement, see, yeah. see when you understand something like that. Now, why was his faith and why was their faith s spoken of? They were not ashamed of the gospel. That's right. You'd be surprised how many people today that know Jesus Christ as Lord, but they're ashamed to talk about it publicly or to witness it in a place. Not they're that. ashamed to pray over their food because somebody might see them. <laughs> Things of that nature. Look what it says in verse 16 of Romans chapter 1 that I want you to go ahead and comment on. Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believe it to the Jew first and also to the Greek. In other words, if, you're, if you want your faith to be known in your community, in your church, in your job, is that you must never be ashamed of the gospel. Right. You must let your light shine. Now, I don't push the gospel on people. Right. I mean, you know, I had a friend of mine, he's Jewish and I like him a lot, and he says, are you going to try to convert me? I said, no. And he kind of freaked out, you know, and he said, why? I said, well, first thing first, I said, I can't convert you and neither can God without your permission. See, God gave you something called free will. See what I'm saying? Free will to choose him. Uh, he said, but, yeah, but I noticed that, that uh, every time I get around that person or around their family, they ask me about my faith. They go, why, why do you believe in this so much? Well, now I'm learning that my faith is spoken of all over New Orleans mm -hmm. and literally all over the world. I'm not bragging about that because I'm not ashamed of the gospel. No. See, in any way, shape, or form, anywhere. And i tell you why, you know, uh, you know, when I, when I wasn't saved, I didn't care if people heard me curse. I didn't care if they saw me drunk. That's the truth. I didn't care. You know it. You were there. I, I didn't care about nothing. Why should I be caring if somebody sees me pray or sees me lift my hands up publicly or praise the Lord or say, thank you, Jesus, on the street, in the restaurant? Why? I didn't care when I wasn't saved if they heard me cuss. Nobody cares about that stuff. Why do they care about something so precious as the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. You see, and, and you shouldn't be. God said, if you shame of me, I will be ashamed of you. Well, Paul was not ashamed of it because he personally understood the power of God unto salvation because that is when his life was radically changed, when he was on that road to Damascus and he encountered Jesus. You know, each one of us can look back and think about the moment when we encountered Jesus and that should give us 
power and strength and, and to build up our faith. So to, you know, to just believe God, know that nothing's impossible with God. When I think about your encounter, in fact, I talked about that on Sunday, how you were uh, so changed by the gospel. Cool. I, we knew about the power of God. If it could change you, like I said, you were such a heathen. <laughs> <laughs> well, nothing uh, could change It could change, change you. Only the gospel could. And the fact we had been talking about that recently. Well, the how gospel you was said, stronger you know, nothing, than my free will. Well, you said nothing. You know, you tried to change yourself. Your mama tried to change you. I tried to change you. You could not change yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you encountered Jesus, when you, and you didn't physically encounter him the way Paul did on that road no, to Damascus. That's right. But you, in your heart, in you bathroom. had a God encounter. You had a, a vision moment, as vision you moment, said recently, yeah. and it it changed you. And so when you have that moment, you need to draw from that when you're encountering other people that are lost because that will give you the spirit, the strength and the courage and the confidence to speak out about what's really Amen. important in your life and how what could affect their life. That's how Paul was. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. In fact, when Paul went to, to the different cities to preach the gospel, he went right in the middle of town, like in Athens. Yeah. I mean, the busiest town, right there in one of the busiest towns of that nation. He didn't go in the outskirts, a little village. No, he went right in the middle and started speak, speaking to a crowd of people because well, he, <laughs> he was passionate about what had so changed his life. He was full of faith. But it's amazing. He, he saw that sign, the unknown God. Yeah. How can your God be unknown? You see, especially if you say you worship him. If you're a Christian, why wouldn't you want to go to church? <clears throat> I mean, you know, you figure this. Out of 100, well, see how many hours in a week? 24 7, uh, what about 166, I, I think, something know. like that. <laughs> that, that, that. You know, figure that out for me, George. How many hours in a week? <laughs> Let me 24 calculate. times 7. I, I think I have a calculator. I think it's 166 here. hours no, or something like that, I think. And, you know, and, and a lot of churches don't even do an hour of service, much less, you know, Pentecostals do a lot longer. You know, it's, it's because they enjoy God more. You well, know what I'm I think what it is is that it's so easy to get callous to be to get the, let the cares of this life come in and swoop into in your life and change you so that you're not as passionate as you once were. How many hours? 168. 168. 168. Oh, I was hours. close. I was close. 168 yeah, hours. Close. And you just can't spend an hour with God or, or a couple of hours? I mean, that's amazing to me. Your faith will never be known in the world. It'll never be known in the community. It'll never be known. Why? Because, you see, you're not passionate about it. Why do we... Think about Abraham so much. He calls the father, he's the father of faith. Not because they had a baby at 100, it's how that man would believe. Mm. How he would stand on the word of God and just believe. He considered not, he staggered not, he was fully persuaded. He called those things that be not as though they were. Mm. It didn't make no difference what came Abraham's way. And he had some tough times in life, if you think about it. Right. I mean, God required some things of him. Ooh, uh -huh. that I'm glad he hadn't required of me. Right. Uh, you know, and, and, but when you see, uh, but you know what? He passed the test. Sure he did. He did because, and why? And what, what happened because of that? His faith is known all over the world, right. all over in Judaism, right. all over in Christianity, literally all over the world. Right. This man called Abraham. I love that. And the Bible talks about, I'm trying to find where it's at, but how we should follow the steps of Abraham. Amen. Uh -huh. Well, Hebrews 11, it starts with him in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I mean, if you think about this man who could believe the unbelievable, receive the impossible simply because it was doable. So I like what Paul, as she's looking for that scripture, I like what Paul said that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. What an honor that is. Right. Now, now, you know, in Hebrews 11, you went to Hebrews 11 a while ago. Verse 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But I like verse 2. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. That's right. People are noticing what kind of faith you have. That's true. You see what I'm saying? In every area of your life. Then God comes upon the scene. He says, because your faith has been this, because you're willing to believe, I am a rewarder of them that diligently seek me hmm. because you please me. Yeah, that's it. You know, and it's amazing how you can tell people. If you go up to people and you say, I please God. You know what they say? Who do you think you are? <laughs> They think you're being cocky and arrogant. No, you're being scriptural and biblical because your faith pleases him, which I think the reason why people say that, because I think that they, make, they look at themselves and realize their faith is not pleasing God at all, mm -hmm. trying to get things to happen and function and work when God's word is so true in every area of your life, spiritually, physically, and financially. Mm -hmm. So think about that. So we call Hebrews 11 in the preaching circles the hall of faith. Yeah, the heroes of faith the heroes is listed there. 
So it's a hall. And right? they have some people in there that you wouldn't think would be in it. Sure. Rahab the harlot. Right. You wouldn't think, for God's sake, in any way, shape, or form. But when you have faith, not only will God notice it, but the world will notice right. it. Right. Sometimes you're the first one in your family that grab hold of the, the concept of God and, and faith grows in your heart and you get changed and transformed and then you transform your whole family. And, and this woman, Rahab, she rescued her whole family from the, and she oh, was in the middle of that destruction of before Jericho was, was destroyed. She threw her life on the line with her people as well as with Israel's people. Wow. Because you can imagine some of these people, they'd have killed her in a second. She's a strong woman. Strong, strong woman. I look woman. forward to meeting her in heaven one day. Yeah, <laughs> and what about the lady that uh, that's on her knees to touch Jesus' garment? Yeah. If, you know, if I could but touch his garment, mm -hmm. I would be healed. Yeah. Now, you know how disappointed that woman was? Spent all her money all her living on doctors and couldn't get it to work. She would have been killed if they'd have found out you don't touch a rabbi. Right. Because they would call her unclean because right. of the issue of blood. So, all the different things. That's right. amazing to yeah, me. Yeah, and I was just thinking when you was talking about her and these different, uh, both these women, powerful women, how uh, you often say a statement that faith isn't a risk, it's a relief. It's a relief. So they didn't risk their life. They got a relief because Ooh. faith is a substance of things hoped for, like we talked about evidence of things not seen. I found that verse and it's in Romans chapter four, it's still in Romans and okay. it says in verse 12, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of faith, of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Because uh, that circumcision of that day was the, was the, um, the act of faith that God told mm -hmm. Abraham to do to separate him people. from the rest of the world. But that was a physical thing they did. But God was, this book of Romans is trying to talk about the spiritual circumcision, which means we're dedicated, our lives are totally dedicated to God. And because of that, mm -hmm. we are of the family of Abraham by faith. Oh, we're not of the blood lineage maybe of uh, of, of, of the Hebrews or right. Jews, but by faith we became sons and daughters well, of Abraham. Adoption papers. Were, the adoption us, papers, that's which right. Which we have the same legal rights. Although when my daughter, our daughter Jody, did a little DNA, little DNA testing, she found out that on her mother's side she was related to Luke, who was Hebrew. So maybe maybe I have it in me. <laughs> right. But then again, you and I are related way back uh but it showed it only on the mother's side for some reason. It didn't know. show anything on her father's side. But uh, well, you know, people some, don't care too much for fathers. They always talk about <laughs> their mamas. <laughs> you know, you but know, we the found truth. out we were like 15th cousins. I don't know what the, how far it is back, but we have a common ancestor way back, like uh, gra grandmothers or so, something some like way that. Back there. It's not really close. But we we, when we, we wreath, don't have a tree. We have tree. a what? We have a wreath. A, a family wreath. A family <laughs> wreath. <laughs> people come down. We marry anybody we could get our hands on. My, my, all my ancestors, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But we are we are spiritually related to to Abraham by faith. Oh yes, this indeed. This was the father of faith, is what the scriptures talk about. But he was one that you could admire and model your life after because he took steps of faith, left everything behind, and had his eyes. Bible talks about how he was searching for a city whose maker was God. His foundation and foundation maker was God. And maker was God. Well, that Hebrews 11, if you have a feeling depressed, you shouldn't, but if you do, you go to Hebrews chapter 11 and you start reading that thing. I'm telling you, it's amazing. It will stir you up. Even women, they, they were, they, Jesus came to heal them. No, so we could obtain a better resurrection. That takes great faith to say that. Yeah. To be able to do those things. Is your faith spoken of throughout the whole world. And that's what, I, that's what I'm talking about there. It's just amazing. Now think about, do you think, I don't, I don't really believe Paul would have realized, did not realize that when he began to write these epistles to the churches that he was associated with, that we would, he was writing the Bible. You know, I, I never forget when we went to heaven in 1988, I asked the apostle Paul, and some people don't believe that it was true anyhow. I said, what surprised you more than anything? you know, once you got here. He said, when God took my words and made my words his words, and that's the scripture. Mm -hmm. See what I'm thinking about? And that's exactly came from the lips of the apostle Paul. God took my words and made him, made my words his words. I love that. Well, I mean, that's a phenomenal statement coming from him. And, you know, some people don't believe. Well, it doesn't make any difference. I'm not trying to convince people to believe. I just know this is true. Mm -hmm. You know why I know it? Because it changed me. Kathy couldn't change me. I couldn't change me. 
To tell you the truth, I didn't want to be changed. I didn't care. It didn't make any difference whatsoever what the world thought about me. Like as if you think I'd, sm I'd lose one hour of sleep because you didn't like me. No, didn't make no difference to me or like me. Did, didn't make no difference. But when the Lord saved me mm -hmm. with words. Think about it. Just words from a man that wasn't in, in, in the room. That was a guy named Billy Graham. Television. Television, man. Something changed in me. Mm -hmm. And man, you, many of you know my testimony. I went into that bathroom, closed that door, and I couldn't get in there fast enough. God got in that door. I didn't even know how to pray. I didn't know what to do. But I knew something was going on that was phenomenal. Little did I realize what had actually happened. Because it wasn't, I played that, I, I walked out that bathroom, went down and did that show. And the next day I went to church, and that shocked the fire out of you because you couldn't believe that. I was always I can't trying believe to pull it. you to church. In fact, we had a lot of bad memories about that. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> but I was yeah. always trying to use every available tool to try to bring you in because my heart was to get you born again right. because I knew that I didn't want you to go to hell. Even though you uh, deserved hell, <laughs> all of us actually deserved it. I, even though I, whether I didn't do all the things you did, I still was destined to go to that same place, and I didn't, I didn't want you to go there. Yeah, I mean, I, well, something sparked your faith, see, and your faith began to work, and faith will work. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Let's just go to that real quick. And uh, for you, if, you, if you, you're with us on this little study here, on this boardroom chat, and it just, Hebrews, James, that'll help you, and uh, minister in, in verse 11. If you begin to look at all this, my God. Verse 11 or chapter 11? Uh, chapter 11, I'm sorry. And, um, well, verse 11 says, Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. That was Abraham's wife. And was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Mm. My God. And, and when you think about it, look, look at verse 13. Uh, these all died in faith not having received the promise. It didn't make no difference. But having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. See, these people didn't even go by what they saw. Mm -hmm. they, they went by what they believed. They knew in yeah. whom they had believed. You missed verse 12, which is go so ahead. powerful. You skipped the 13, but verse 12 says, Therefore uh, sprang there even of one, meaning Abraham, because there was one child that was born for Abraham and Sarah. Uh -huh. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, meaning Abraham was so old. Um, no, there's nobody nobody could have sex. Could, or even Abraham have sex. and impossible. Sarah, or produce a child. Right. Uh, and as so, and then they says, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as and the and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Yeah. That was the vision that God had given Abraham, how he was to go out and look at the sky and the stars and see if you could count them. Uh, you, of course, you couldn't count them. Go and count the sand that was right. there. You couldn't count that. It was so many. He says, that's how much I'm going to bless you. That's how your, your seed's going to multiply. And at the time <laughs> when God amazing. gave him that great, powerful vision, uh, he hadn't had a child. He was frustrated because he had accumulated all this wealth. He had silver, cattle, and gold. And he had all these other servants that were serving him, but he didn't have anyone to give it to. And God had put that on, that desire actually on his heart to believe for that. And, and, and Abraham and Her Sarah had a child. And look what's happened today. We're part of that oh, generation. That's right. We are, Not just we the blood inheritance. relative like we were talking before, but spiritually speaking, the whole body of Christ has this, our heritage in this powerful man of faith called Abraham. Well, you, if you look by faith, God blessed Jacob and Esau, even that's, though Esau uh, rejected his birthright. Yeah, you'd be just close to it. <laughs> True, man. Let me just tell you something. This stuff is powerful. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Why would anybody ever walk away from it? I don't know, but I've seen a lot of people do it. And I, and it, it hurts my spirit because some people say, well, they had surface faith. Well, maybe they did. Maybe they did. I don't know. I can't judge them. But what I'm saying is, why would you walk away from something that has worked for thousands and thousands of of years. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing to me. I think about people that are now in heaven that I personally knew, Lester Summerall, that I knew. People that I, you know what I'm saying, that I, uh, uh, you know, wouldn't give up on nothing. Mm -hmm. Some of the greatest ministers that I preach for, who, I mean, you would never know them, smaller churches than when I first started back there. Oh, God. I mean, just people that would believe the word of the living God. My good friend R. W. Schoenbach. My mm. God, that man could believe. I just enjoyed that. I, 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 to see how it would function and operate. 
And I, I, I remember uh, T.L. Osborne, how they would just believe. They were just as human as anybody else. They made mistakes like everybody else. You know, so what? You know what I'm saying? But their faith was spoken of. The great voice of healing evangelists, the A. A. Allens, the mm-hmm. William Branhams, the Oral Robertses, my God, the David Nuns. The Di- I mean, these are people. My God, I'll never forget when I first went to Christ for the Nations. I mean, Frida Lindsay to me was just one of the finest women Oh, a I woman I ever met in my life. I mean, what an honor to know. What her. an honor to know her and and, and spend time with her. Mm-hmm. We spent quite a bit of time together. What a wonderful and and people ask me, what's the first thing you want to look? At? What's the first thing you did when you went to Christ for the Nation? I went to the library, so I could pick up those very beginning of those Voice of Healing magazines. Mm-hmm. Young Oral Roberts. They had dark brown hair, man, and they, and uh, 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 it was just amazing. I would I would go back in time. Right. And we're still talking about these wonderful people today. You know, I was just thinking about when you brought that up, you know, because we're traveling all over the scriptures here, but this is a unique study because it's so important. But these people that you talked about, they served their generation. Oh, did they ever? And and we're still talking about them. They, they fulfilled what God called them to do. And uh, we're doing that too. We're fulfilling what mm-hmm. God's called to do. You're talking about going, reading those old magazines oh, that I were in the it. archives. Well, we have these archives yeah. back in our app. Uh, the team, George was telling me that they have all of these past issues of our magazines, which is loaded with spiritual help and <laughs> encouragement that people could go back and read. In fact, those old testimonies over the years, every part of the magazine is in there, not just the articles. Yeah, See what God's yeah. done you know over the years. That's, about, a, that's amazing to think <laughs> what's, about. What's amazing about archives, my granddaughter is, uh, is a blessing of God. She's 15 going on 47. You know how that is. And uh, to make a long story short, she'll see her grandfather, me, with brown hair, young, <laughs> without this thing hanging down on my neck, without any of these uh, wrinkles and cracks and all that kind of stuff. It's amazing yeah, how you, you can You started preaching when you were how old? 26. 26, my first, first message. My first sermon when I was 26 years old on the first week of January, 1976. Yeah. And never thinking... Uh, I was called. I said, I, I, that this couldn't. This the, the, the pastor sprung it on you. He told he, he announced to the me. church that Sunday morning. And you know, we never miss church. We, no, Jesse was preaching. He was uh, working at a, a company. Were you at Shell Oil? Patterson at the, Truck Line Patterson at that time. Patterson Truck Line at the time, or was it Shell Oil at the well, time? Well, both Patterson Truck Line and Shell. Right. But then you, uh, I remember we were at church. We never missed church never. while you were working in those, because you first was a nightclub entertainer. They got born again. Then we moved to our home. You never missed church when I started preaching. You would get the church bus. Right. right. I mean, church has always been a big part because we were passionate about learning from the, oh, uh, yeah. the Lord, learning the word, but being faithful. God was training us in the beginning, the power of being faithful. And whether <laughs> we understood it, maybe some, you left service, you didn't feel like you got anything. Something's getting in there. Well, you, you had some faith, though, Kathy. <laughs> I would go out and we barely knew enough to be dangerous. You understand? Just there. And Kathy, I'd come back from a meeting. This is, you know. And Kathy said, I'm doing a series on the end times. Good God, man. I was studying it. <laughs> he was the, and I mean, she'd come up with some stuff, and I thought, I, the end times. I just wanted Nobody to know the, knows about the end times. I Kathy just wanted to know it. the sequence of events in my own heart. I was curious, you know, and one day I'll have to do a study on that. And then you do a, a little Bible study in the house I had or a Bible study in my home, but that first Sunday when, that you preached is what we're talking about. You had, the pastor said, we have a guest speaker tonight. And we <laughs> wondered, we looked at each other, well, wonder who it is. And, and, that they, and then he announced your name and you went, wow. I said, oh, no, no, no. I said, you got the wrong man here. And it wasn't that I was afraid to be in front of people. I've been in front of people most of my adult life. Right, because you already thing. at that point, you had like a little Bible, st- you you led the, uh, what was it, the Sunday school for the teenage yeah, boys. Yeah, I, I helped them. That. You also helped with the choir. You did, yeah, I did you all did those a lot things. of things. But I just felt, my God, if I say something wrong, I'm going to mess up somebody's mind. I just didn't want it. That pulpit to me, it's always been very special. Right, that's Very good. holy. That's good. A place where you break the bread of life. Right. See what I'm saying? So, but little did I realize God, and this is going to sound arrogant, God was working on my reputation. Right. That my faith would be spoken of That's throughout true. the world. And That's it really true. is. I don't mean that right. You ought to go back and preach. You have that, right? The notes on that message that you preached? On Lazarus? Yeah. I could try to find it somewhere. Wouldn't that be good if you could preach that again? <laughs> yeah. I'm always, always trying, trying to get him to go back and preach some of his older messages because some of those are Just, really weren't even recorded that he's got oh, them written no, in yeah. notes. Some we of those nothing. maybe been on a little small cassette player, which is kind of <laughs> like bad, uh, a lot of hissing sound. I remember Brother Corbin said, 
He, he would have reel-to-reel tapes. I didn't have enough money to buy a reel-to-reel tape, much less anything else, because I gave all my money away. You don't think we had some faith to do something like that? And we were so glad that God had saved us. Mm-hmm. You can still tell we're glad That's that right. God saved us. Yeah. It's just such a blessing to know the Lord. You don't know him, you can meet him today. I feel a little Lord to pray for you today, mm-hmm. right now. Not, not, I don't care what you've done. You, I, I really believe you hadn't done what I've done. You have no idea what I was capable of doing before I was saved. But you know, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you see, God expunged my record. Mm-hmm. Not only did he, it doesn't exist. He washed it all away, not covered it. Uh-uh, he washed it away. All evidence against me was dissolved and never happened. Right. So I'm going to ask you to pray right there. Just say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Forgive me. Forgive me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. I accept you today. I accept you today. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. From this day forward. From this day forward. I'm going to serve you. I'm going to serve Help you. Help me to learn this Bible. Help me to learn this Bible. Help me to learn Christianity. Help me to learn Christianity. By faith. By faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now you pray that little simple Amen. prayer. You just got into the kingdom of God. Amen. You see, right. you think, well, no, that's too easy. That's how good faith is. Yeah. That's how good it is. Right. Washed it away, expunged it. Right. Never to be remembered against you anymore. I want to read Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, yeah. which is going to confirm what you sure. just did. It's one read of my it. favorite verses of scripture. It says in verse 9 of Romans chapter 10, yeah. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God Amen. hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's a for powerful the, prayer. And then verse 11 is confirms, it says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel because it was the power of unto God. salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jew first and to the Greek. And to the Greek. So it's, it includes everyone. I mean, you think about how powerful faith that Joseph, he could have sinned with Potiphar's wife, but he said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against my God? You know what stopped him? His faith. Right. Not fear of God. Right. His faith in God. I want to honor God wherever I'm at. Mm-hmm. And why goes to prison for 20 years and still honors God. Right. That doesn't make any difference. That's why I ask you today, is your faith known in your neighborhood? Is your faith known in your church? Is your faith known on your job? Now, I'm not talking about just beating people with religion. Religion is a garden of weeds. It's a theological wilderness. It's never done anybody any good whatsoever at all. But when you accept God, accept Christ with your heart, not with your head, but with your heart, because you are spirit housed in a soul and clothed in a body. Mm -hmm. Then you begin to see these wonderful examples. I had some people say, Brother Jesse, I want to be like you. I said, (laughs) you want to be like Jesus. Man, I'm so low on the totem pole, but I'm doing everything I can to climb that totem pole. Uh You know what I'm saying? That that kind of stuff. And I just made up my mind that I I, I am going to live by faith. And that reputation goes before me and, and stays behind me and all around me. And that's why we preach so much. You know, you look at this ministry. I've had people come and say, look at the stuff Brother Jesse has at Jesse the Planet's ministry. All the cameras, the amount of money, the different things it takes. It was all built by faith. All the buildings, everything, Mm. lock, stock, and barrel built by faith. That's true. God moved upon part. Listen, I, I tell my staff this all the time. We got a very big payroll. You understand what I'm saying? Big payroll. And that's okay. And it's all done by faith. There's no guarantee of anything. And yet, we've never had a financial deficit. And you know what? We never will. Hmm. Now, people say, well, I wouldn't say that. I'm going to say that. That's how faith talks. That's right. It says what it wants. Right. It doesn't say what it has. It, already, it don't waste time on what it has. Mm-hmm. It says what it wants. It's right. forever increasing, increasing going forward. That's why God said, oh, well, our faith is impossible to please me. For he that believeth him, he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. That's a Hebrews 11, verse 6. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you go through that chapter. You go back to that Romans chapter when you go, that your faith is spoken of throughout mm-hmm. the whole world. You don't think that blessed the Apostle Paul's heart. Oh, yeah. Think about that. It, it, I mean, it's just, just amazing. I, I, you know, I know several ministers that their family, they come from a line of ministers. Like John Hagee, he come from a line of preachers right. and, and ministers yes. and stuff like that. And that's such an honor to be able to do that. And the different, so many different ministers in a family 
Right. What a blessing that's got to be, you know what I'm saying? My father eventually became a minister, mm -hmm. my dad, you know what I'm saying? I know he, he never went full time or any of that kind of stuff, but he did preach in those little local churches, you know, mm -hmm. and God changed his life. Right. So, you know, I, I, when I go out and preach the gospel and when I leave here, I'm going out to preach the gospel. You know why? Because my partner sent me to do what? To produce faith in people's lives. So I thank all our partners for being so courteous and kind to support this ministry financially. Mm -hmm. Without your faithful financial support, we couldn't do it. We could not do this. It would not work. But, but you know, we believe in you and you believe in us. And both of us believe in God. So thank you for helping me get somebody saved today, somebody healed today, somebody out of depression, discouragement, despondent, right. some, stopping someone from suicide, every kind of thing. I mean, bringing the joy of the Lord in our heart. And if you're not a partner and you'd like to become one, this is how you do it. You go to jdm.org. That's our website, and you can give that way if you like. Right. You don't want to give? Don't. You don't have to. If you want to, fine. You can use PayPal if you like. You can text to give a one-time donation or a recurring one if you want to. Or you can select giving on our app. On our app. Mm -hmm. Or you can just mail in an old-fashioned check to the ministry. Here's the thing that I love. I love saying this. 100% of what you've given, have gave, given today, and going to give, goes 100% in the world evangelism. We're totally debt-free. We have no debts whatsoever at all. You send me $100, $100. I ask the Lord for every dollar, give me my ministry, give me a soul in the kingdom, I'm going to get 100 people. You send me a thousand, I'll get a thousand. You send me a hundred million, I'll get a hundred million. I have the ability to do that through what we're doing right here. Mm -hmm. Think about that. So thank you for being a partner. And, and invite people to watch our programs. We've got so many of them, the boardroom chats, the faith, the facts, uh, your glorious livings, uh, your Bible studies, and then our broadcast television. I can't forget that. Sunday ABC, CBS, yeah. we all over the world. Preaching this glorious and the sun, gospel. The church services. The church the, services. The Wednesday night services are on audio and Amen. The Sunday Amen. service are on video full. But it couldn't yeah. happen right. without my faith working, without your faith working, and together our faith comes together and we reach people, change lives, one soul at a time. Give me a wonderful testimony. That's here, right. And you know, people that are partners are part of all these souls that are being reached. In fact, in the, uh, almost a year ago now, we have launched into the Spanish-speaking world with a bigger push to do everything that we do online and in, the, in, the, in Spanish. And this is one testimony that came in from this. They watched a, a faith the fact uh, that uh, talks about go through people's approval. So the, some of the times the Spanish things are just maybe the next week or something like that. Uh -huh. but some of them are in real time the same week. But uh, this one says, uh, from Barbara Lopez, and it was translated into English so I can read it to you. It says, Hello, Jesse. What a blessing it is to hear from you. May the Lord give me an, an anointing like yours. <laughs> I admire you and thank God for your life. I hope to be prospered and get out of debt. Amen. Greetings from Argentina. From Argentina. I've never been to Argentina. I'd like to go there. Well, you're, Barbara, you're, thank our, you. <laughs> uh, our messages have gone there. Oh, yeah. There. I like to go there in person, praise God. Hallelujah. Your I, faith is being spoken of there in Argentina. In Argentina. And I have never <laughs> been to Argentina. think of it like that. Yeah, give me another one. Another one. This is from Maureen Mor Martino Cravel, and it uh, says, I love these boardroom chats and connecting with you. I'm not the same Jesse since you la laid your hands on me at the camp meeting in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania oh, praise with the Lord. Jonathan Shuttlesworth. I love you both. So this was from a physical meeting that you went to. Let me see that And thing. they wrote in Which on that, that chat thing. A comment. I love these born and I'm not the same Jesse since you laid. Her name is Jesse? Not the same. I'm not, oh, I'm not no. the same Jesse since you laid your hands on the I'm not the, the same. Cat. I yeah, wish it yeah. could have been a comma. comma. right there. I was wondering, I thought her name was Jesse. Praise no, her well, name let me look is at Maureen. It. Praise God. What a blessing <laughs> to God. This is one from Diana. She says, I praise God for you. You have encouraged and inspired me greatly. Love and blessing from New Zealand. A, a, I don't know how to say that word. A, a, a terio? Oh, oh, I don't know either. Did, a terio, you know? I've been to New Zealand. I've preached there. Oh, into an A. Oh, Ro man, what a Ro blessing. Ro There's so many things. Interior. Listen, listen. New Zealand. This wrote about uh, a visionary conference. Thursday night, Brother Jesse and the whole JD ministry have been a complete blessing in my life. Having this man of God provide the world with laughter and practical yet simple teaching is such a gift that is beyond compare. Thank you, Brother Jesse <laughs> and Pastor Kathy. Your saying yes has changed my life so many 
ways. Yes, that's a phrase that I used for uh, years ago. God's still in my heart because I I talked about how I stepped into my yes. God was calling me to do something that was outside of my comfort zone, and I and I decided to. You know when I stepped into my yes? What? When he said, do you take this woman to be your lawful <laughs> wedded wife? Lawful wedded wife. Awful? Law, lawful wedded wife. <laughs> your awful I wedded wife. I said, yes. Yeah, you mean In lawful. 53 years and counting. Glory <laughs> to God, hallelujah. You didn't know what you were stepping into, did you? <laughs> yeah, what did I <laughs> Yeah, I, well, I think I did, but not nowhere near God, the understanding God of knew what we were doing. Oh, and yeah. even though we didn't know him then, we look back today and realize that God ordered our steps even before we were born, born again. And even we're, as we're teenagers. Walk, as teenagers, and we're walking out our destiny even today at this age, full of passion and fire to do what God's called us to do How years ago. How old are you, Kathy? <laughs> Don't you know? <laughs> yes, I know. It's but not a mystery. Not you, you tell the world. <laughs> I'm 70 years old. And when are you going to make 71? In August. In the August. Last, Hallelujah. Well, August the 30th. Isn't that something? My God. Well, of and course, the other according day, to Jesse, the moment that I make uh, 71 <laughs> on August the 30th, he's going to tell me going and everyone <laughs> that I'm going on, I'm almost 72. I'm, on, I'm on going on. He doesn't celebrate the year you're in. Well, just, let me tell you why. He's like he was still 12. Let me know? tell you why. Because it took nine months for you to uh, to recreate it. So you got nine months on you there. You know, I think that uh, uh, Oriental people, they, when a baby's born, they start at one. <laughs> We start at zero, but they start at one. Well, I think they're right and we're wrong, uh, probably. You I don't know. know if that's true. Anyway, <laughs> is your faith spoken of throughout the whole world? Uh-huh. That's what we're talking about today. Mm-hmm. I want you to meditate and concentrate on that and let God just let your faith soar. Someone needs your faith. Someone needs your witness. Never be ashamed of this glorious gospel. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Faith is not something you have to drum up. The Bible tells us that we've all been given the measure of faith. The measure. And so, but faith comes, even though you've been given it, that's what we use to get set, born again with. And believe goes. in God. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but the people, Bible teaches us, I think it's in the book of Rome. Faith, where is, I don't know where it's at right now, but it, faith uh, comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's right. And, and that word comes as a continual process. So faith grows when you hear it, but also when you put it into practice. It's like a muscle. It has to be used. Yes, you have indeed. to act on it. Start small. Believe God. Don't, Amen. And, and see your faith come to pass. I remember Amen. having faith projects and, and thinking, you know, I'm going to use my faith on this one thing. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it came to pass. Sometimes it's a, it's a physical thing. Sometimes right. it's been other small things. I'm thinking, you know, if Believe for the headache healing before you, you can launch out into something stronger or bigger, right, like yeah. cancer or anything. But learn to work your faith on the small things, and you'll begin to see it come to pass. on the Exercise it daily. Exercise. And it'll work for you. Amen. I hope you enjoyed today. So go out. Get your faith known throughout the whole world by letting your light shine. This is Jesse and Kathy saying we'll see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.